What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Of course, my name is Gareth from Park Cameras, as it always is. And today, you may have noticed, we're not in the normal place with the lights and all that kind of stuff. We're actually in my kitchen. And the reason for that is we're gonna be talking about food photography. And what better place to do that than here in the kitchen? It's tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, each and every Tuesday, we bring a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now this week, of course, it's no different. It is Tuesday after all, and we are gonna be talking about food photography. It's a great follow-up to what we were talking about last week, which was flat lay photography. But of course, where we were doing that, we had some food in that one, we were doing that entirely top down. Whereas this time we're gonna talk about different angles you can use, we're gonna talk about lighting, we're gonna talk about all kinds of stuff, set up loads of things. So let's jump into it with lighting first of all, because I wanna get one thing out of the way. The reason I'm set up right here next to this window is because I wanna prove my point about how good window light can be. I wanted to kind of show it specifically rather than just talk about it. So I often talk about how you could use a continuous light and I've got one right here. And for a lot of food photography that I do, I do use a continuous light because it's, it's easy to control. You know, you can set where the light source is coming from. You can kind of control the light a little bit. So for example, last week I talked about how I use cushions to block some of the light to create kind of a tunnel of light so I could kind of shape things the way I wanted it to. That is something you can do really easily with just a continuous light. Whereas window light is not so easy to do that kind of stuff. However, window light is a great source of light for this kind of stuff. It gives nice diffuse soft lighting. So you can see I've set this stuff up here so we can talk about this. And the window light is just falling oh, beautifully onto my food here and onto my kind of setup. Now I've got a, a smallish window here. There's a window behind the camera as well, which kind of helps to soften those shadows a little bit, but it is a perfect amount of light to be able to take these photos. And if you don't have a continuous light or a flash or anything like that, and you want to be able to do this without massive setup and stuff like this, this is a perfect way of doing it. So essentially, just as a kind of quick overview of how we're gonna set up the lighting in this situation, we are gonna just position ourselves close to a window like this, so it's just on a table, on a surface, close to a window so that that window light can just fall kind of naturally onto your subject. And that's pretty much it. That's the whole setup for using window light. When you're using continuous light, you're gonna to wanna to try and position it maybe in one of the corners so that you've got light coming in from one specific direction and then soften that up by diffusing that light as much as possible, just get nice soft shadows. Now we're gonna talk about the angles you can shoot as well because there's lots of different things to talk about with that rather than just top down, which is what we were talking about last week. But first of all, I wanna run you through exactly what we've got set up here because I've set this up specifically so that we can actually talk about it. So essentially what the, the main focus of the photo in this setup is actually these cookies in the middle. I'll put some photos up on screen so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So we've got these cookies in the middle. That's gonna be essentially the, the focal point of the image. So I've set those up. There's just four cookies there that I've kind of piled up a little bit. I've, tried, I've, I've done a bit of trial and error just to try and get them looking quite nice in a little pile. And then to add a bit of texture around the cookies and to make you, you feel the kind of crumbliness, which I assume is a word, of the cookies I've taken another cookie and I've literally just broken it up and crumbled it all over the place here so that there's some texture to the actual image and then there's a kind of a feel of what these cookies are like. Now I'm using a, a kind of backdrop, a flat lay backdrop here, which is like a dark wood kind of look to things. You could just use wood if you have any wood, that would look fantastic you'd have really nice texture there. Whereas this is obviously, I think it's vinyl, so it doesn't have that texture of wood, but it looks good. I could also just use the wood of my table, but I just prefer the look of this. Now I just bought this online. It's nothing special. You can just look them up on Amazon or wherever it is you want to purchase them from, but they make for a really useful thing. There's all kinds of different designs and stuff you can get. I'm a big fan of wood and that's why I'm using this. Now, so we've got the cookies. We've got the crumbled up cookie there as well. And then we need to kind of fill in the photo because while the cookies are the focal point, the photo looks a bit empty if it's just them and then crumbled up bits of cookie. So what goes well with cookies? Well, milk, right? Milk and cookies is a pretty well-known kind of traditional thing. So I've just gotten a glass, I've poured milk in there, filled it up pretty, pretty high because it wants to look, you know, wants to look really nice 
and I've just popped that next to the cookie. So it's not a focal part, it's not taking anything away, but it kind of just adds to the kind of coziness, the homeliness of the whole situation. So what else goes with some of this stuff? Because it still looks a little bit, a little bit empty without anything else. Well, I've just added in some chocolate. So I just bought some dark chocolate, which I'm not even sad about because I will eat that later. I've just broken that up into kind of these hard lined chunks. And then I've just dotted it around a little bit so that it kind of fills in some of these empty spaces. And again, you just get the feel. So that adds to the crumbliness of the cookie we've now got around. And now we've got chocolate and it's just starting to fill in that kind of feel of what we're looking at here. It's just accentuating those cookies in the middle. But it still looks a little bit empty. So I popped some actual still wrapped dark chocolate over on the side as if it was just sort of casually left there. And then I wanted something else dark to kind of darken up the feel of it because I wanted the cookies to really, to really kind of pop out from some of the darker areas around. So something else that goes well in this situation funnily enough, is actually coffee beans. Now, the reason for that, you may not think that along with cookies, but they are actually nice and dark brown, just like the dark chocolate that we've got. So it goes really, really well. And kind of just out on the corner there, they just work really nicely. And then I've just popped a dark tea towel in the other corner, just to kind of give it a feel of kind of uh, a, a, a kitchen that's working, you know, a, it's not a staged thing. I have obviously staged it, <laughs> but it doesn't feel quite so fake. So that all goes really well with this dark wood. And actually that's an important part of it is matching up what you're, what you're photographing with the kind of backdrop, the surface that you're gonna be using. So I've used this slightly darker wood surface because I think it matches well with the dark chocolate, the dark coffee beans, and then the, the cookies and the milk can kind of pop out as a, a splash of brightness and a bit of, a little bit of color there as well. I think that works better than this kind of finish on my table here, which I don't think would have looked as good. But you might be thinking, that's great, but what about the plant? What role does that play in all this? Or have you just left it there by accident? Well, no, actually, this is the final touch on this setup specifically for the photographs. I love having a foreground element to photographs. I just love it in general. You know, a nice blurred out, something that you're shooting through. So while we could absolutely take a photo of this setup and it would be absolutely fine, it would look good, adding this plant in and then shooting the photo through the plant adds in this situation, a splash of color, which is really important because at the moment this is, it's, it, you know, it's not devoid of color at all, but it is relatively sort of just brown, different shades of brown and cream. But this adds a splash of green in there, which just works so well in this situation. It helps to kind of frame things to make it feel more alive, to make it feel kind of more, more vivid and real. And it just really helps tie the whole thing together. So I really, really like doing that. So literally all I've done in this situation is popped this plant here, a little bit further away from the setup. And it's a little bit of trial and error just to move it around to get a situation where you can shoot through the leaves of the plant to create a foreground element without blocking out anything important in the photo. Now, I wouldn't necessarily feel the need to use something like this plant to add a splash of color, to add something in different situations. If it was a quite a colorful dish, I probably wouldn't feel the need at all. But in this situation, it does add a nice kind of, just a, just a bit of color and a bit of an extra dimension to the photo. So let's talk about angles. Obviously, we've got the top down angle. We talked about that last week. That looks really good for all kinds of things. But essentially what you wanna be thinking about here when it comes to angles is what part of the food are you trying to show? You know, there's a lot of things that are gonna look good top down. So for example, when I did the beef bourguignon, I did that top down because the top is really the bit I wanna show. And then I've got a bit of bread off to the side. I've got some different things that all look good from top down. But some foods are gonna look better kind of at a 45 degree angle. So for example, this setup, Absolutely, I'm gonna shoot at a 45 degree angle. I can do it through the plant in this situation, but essentially I'm just shooting down onto it like that. And then of course there's food that works best from a side on angle. You know, it depends on the food. Cake, for example, might look better top down if it's got a very nice top to it. it might look better 45 degree if you wanna get a bit of the top and a bit of the inside of the cake, or it might look good straight on. You know, if you're trying to just get the inside of the cake. You also wanna think about you know, do you want a close-up? So for example, cake could work really well close-up because you'll get the texture of the cake, 
you'll get the kind of the inside, the color, all that kind of stuff. Or do you want it further away? This scene works better, I think, further away because you get a little bit more of the surroundings around it. Usually I'll go for a slightly wider perspective. And then of course you can always crop and post anyway. I really, really enjoy food photography because it's very, very creative for one, in terms of styling, in terms of the angles, all that kind of stuff. But it's also, it's also very kind of doable in your own home. You know, even if you don't have a light, if you just have a camera and a lens, I suppose, you can just set something up next to a window. Use that for your light. You know, just use whatever you've got in the fridge or in the cupboards or whatever. You don't have to buy anything specific. You don't have to make anything. You know, I literally just bought these cookies this morning and this chocolate. And yeah, I'm gonna enjoy that later, sure. No worries. But it makes for a great opportunity to photograph some stuff. It's, it's so creative because there's all kinds of different ways and different things that you can do. And, it, 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 and as soon as I started doing food photography, every time we'd make a dish here at home that was new or interesting or looked good, I'd always immediately think, oh, that'd be fun to photograph that. I should set something up quickly because it doesn't take that long. I can just set it up near the window. I can get my light out and just use that quickly. And I can set a surface up and you can get all kinds of interesting and different results. This is definitely worth giving a go, especially while we're stuck at home. It's a great one to kind of experiment with and get creative and have some fun. I'd love to see your stuff. So make sure to tag Park Cameras in your photos if you pop them on Instagram. Otherwise, if you have any tips of your own or any experience or anything you'd like to share about food photography, pop it down in the comments because I'd love to hear all about it. There's a full list to all the kit used for all this kind of stuff, including the photos, the video, everything down in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed as well. That really helps the channel out. I will of course see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.